In Lingotech, and I am pleased to present to you, uh, to you today um, our Lingotech Plus Oracle Global Web Experience Management Solution that's specifically with Oracle Web Center sites. Uh, a little bit of an agenda today. I'll go through this very quickly. We're going to talk about how you easily manage multilingual sites. Uh, we'll mention a little bit how you synchronize that content, manage changes. We'll show you how you can translate content on the fly. That's uh, through machine translation, uh, kind of a real-time translation. Uh, we'll show you how you can use some community to help translate content. And then we'll also show you that uh, on occasion when you need professional translation, we can show you how that uh, is handled through the system as well. I want to just give a little bit of an introduction to Lingotech. We were founded in 2006. Uh, we are based in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we have three main focuses that we work on. The first one is we have a cloud-based translation management system that enables continuous multilingual content synchronization. Uh, this allows you to manage projects, do customized workflows, manage translation memories, glossaries, and a variety of other things. I'll get into that a little more in detail uh, later on in the presentation. And we also have a very deep integration with Oracle Web Center um, into several of their uh, properties in Web Center. We have sites, uh, content, um, and portal. Uh, today we'll be showing sites specifically uh, via our Lingotech translation mo uh, module. And this allows you to uh, translate content directly inside of that uh, inside of that application or that CMS, and allows you to uh, you know save time and money around the, the translation cost there. We also have a highly uh, capable professional translation services group that complements our core uh, software offering. Um, we do allow folks to also use their own professional translation groups if they have them, or you know in-house in professional translation folks, or you can use ours. Um, as, uh, as a, a complement to what you already have. So I'm going to talk a little bit about web experience management. Um, today's socially enabled multi-channel online world, individuals increasingly expect their online experiences to be targeted specifically to their interests and to provide a point of seamless extension and expressions of who they are. But what seems to be missing in a lot of uh, when you talk about WEM is translation to the in, translation to the viewer's own language is all that is missing. Uh, that's where we feel like we bring in the global and global web experience management. It is impossible for a viewer to have a great web experience if he or she is not viewing the site in a language that is not their own. And here's some basic web statistics that'll help you uh, help make decision in, into translating. Uh, users, 70% of global web users spend their time visiting websites in their own language, uh, even if they're bilingual. Uh, the English language only accounts for 31% of all online use and is in decline. Uh, that's a, a startling number for most folks, especially uh, US-based companies that uh, uh, suspect or think that most people speak English, and that's actually not the case. The web uh, online use is, uh, is actually, you know, the majority is not English. Um, Purchase behavior is 42% of internet users in the European Union would never buy a, a product uh, that's not in their language other than their own, and the thir further 38% of users will only do so on occasionally, uh, or very occasionally. So you can see that if you're not translating content, you're missing out on a lot of opportunities. And 9 out of 10 internet users in the European Union would prefer to visit a, a website in their own language, even if they're bilingual. So some, some kind of good ideas or good uh, uh, statistics here to help you make a decision into translating the website. So the challenge is, in today's highly dynamic uh, websites are characterized by an accelerating and virtual, virtual, virtually continuous cycle of content updates and changes. Legacy processes for managing translation workflows lack the speed and agility to keep multilingual websites in sync. So let's talk about uh, the legacy translation process for a minute. Um, everyone else, and everyone else is being other translation services company, makes you do it the hard way. Here's a typical project um, where you have a project manager and a web administrator, and here are some of the different steps that you have to go through to translate a particular website. Um, identifying content, you know, to editing pages, to either exporting or manually downloading those pages for translation, getting those uh, translated by some a third party, either uh, an in-house person or by a professional translator, 
we see those files back, Jeff fixes them, you preserve the markup, you know, both italics, all the images and that, copy and paste that into the proper place. You typically have to have someone review it in context review um, and all of this kind of going through all of these processes. So what Lingotech does is we actually help automate most, if not all, of these processes here. Um, but the translation, uh, when you work with other translation companies, all they have to offer is an offline translation process. They're really only looking at one particular piece of the entire uh, project management the workflow. The translation is in a black box. You have no visibility into the process. You have no automation or notification of process management. There's no real-time leveraging of translation memories. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about translation memories in a moment. Um, and no ability to review or publish translations as they are completed, so an automated workflow where they publish back in once they're finished. Now, how hard can it really be? Well, if you have languages, um, and then you times that by the number of the pages that you have, and the words per page, and people involved in the process, uh, steps in your process, managed across multiple time zones, you, you see that this becomes a, uh, a big burden for most uh, web project managers and administrators. Um, insufficient man hours are available to keep up with the pace and the volume of this change. And too many manual steps in the translation process. We see folks that are actually managing this stuff in, in Excel spreadsheets. They'll download content, they'll send it over to a translator, and then they'll go through all of these steps and, and, and have you know, the visibility into a spreadsheet. We automate all of that stuff via our translation management system. So not enough automation is what we're really solving. So we're, we're going in and we're creating uh, enterprise business customers with the flexibility to automate the solution for managing their multilingual content workflows. And then in doing that, we save you guys time, money, and mistakes. So how does it work? Uh, uh, we have a, a module or a plug-in, you can call it either that, inside of Oracle Web Center Sites. And that's what Tony is going to be going over a little bit later and showing you how that works specifically. And we have an API set that pushes that up into our translation management system. And we can run through different workflows. And I'll go through workflows in just a second. Um, and when those workflows are done, we publish those back into uh, Oracle Web Center Sites. And uh, it's displayed, uh, the content's displayed in there. So it works, you know, pretty easily and, and integrated seamlessly uh, to get the translation process uh, done. So no more copy, pasting, emailing files around. You can send stuff directly from within the site to the next. So let's talk a little bit about automated workflows. Uh, we have come up with what we call the content value index. Uh, not all content it has the same value. You don't need to translate all content by professionals. Um, you can use other methods to translate different types of content. And so the first one we talk about is automatic translation. This is real time. Uh, it's based on machine translation and translation memories. Machine translation can use best in class machine translation. We actually hook into a variety of different uh, machine translation engines, uh, Microsoft being one, Google being another, uh, Language Weaver, ProMT, uh, OmniFluent, uh, SCIC is OmniFluent, and some others. So best of breed uh, machine translation engines we can, we can bring in and leverage based on your content type and, and the kind of industry you're in. And then translation memories are previously translated content that we store on our cloud-based uh, translation management system that allows you to leverage pre-existing translations. This is all done in real time, so if you have previously translated content, you can actually repurpose that and import it into our system and use that to help translate content. So most people that have sales, marketing, and uh, Support materials are all very similar. They're written typically by the same people, and uh, they have you know the same words or same sentence structures in them. And so you translate in one of those, you can actually uh, leverage that and translate your other content. So you can actually translate more content less expensively. The second one I'm going to talk about is community translation. We use community a little bit loosely. Community can mean uh, a community or a forum of users that you have. Uh, the community could be actually your company or, or workers inside your company. It could be partners of yours. We have clients that use all sorts of uh, assets to help translate content. It might be a country marketing manager. It might be a partner. It might be uh, their community that uh, is, is supporting the forum that they're, uh, that they're doing a support forum with. Uh, community users can help translate. They can do a post edit. So typically what you would do in that situation is you would use machine translation, translation memories, and then you would have community do a, a review and a post edit on that. 
uh, typically that gets uh, 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 you know kind of up the value chain a, a better uh, translation. Um, and then if you really have something that's uh, very important, marketing materials, press releases, and the product documentation, uh, you can always move it up into professional translation and professional review. Again, you can use your own your own translators or our, our own staff translators. Now we have clients that will actually do a variety of uh, these and, and they'll mix and match these workflows. Some will do automatic and then go to professional. Some will do automatic community and then have a professional review it. Some will only do community. Uh, our system is flexible enough that we allow you to build customized workflows and then via the API set we can uh, do those rules and workflows and, and make that happen for you. We can even do it on a uh, on a language by language basis. We have clients that will do one workflow in one language and another workflow in another based on their assets and, and uh, folks that they have that can work with them. So this gives you an idea of the, the flexibility. We like to call it a hybrid approach. Uh, most of the time you're looking at uh, uh, other translation agencies and all they do is professional and that's the only piece that they do. They don't offer up these others. Or you're talking with someone that only sells machine translation. So we, we like to think of ourselves as a hybrid approach to uh, translation and, and adding all of these different workflows and we can make them customized uh, to, to everybody's needs. So Lingotech translation module um, sits inside of uh, you know Oracle uh, Web Center sites. Um, and you can start to see that these different pieces of the workflow are now going to be automated inside of the application itself. And so we take care of these particular pieces of the workflow. What we're, what we're doing is our value proposition is, is we're adding uh, or eliminating different steps in the project management uh, and making that automated. So the steps that you see in blue are automated inside of the, of the Lingotech translation module. It's published up to uh, the Lingotech translation management system. These are done via the API. Uh, these workflows are handled inside of the translation management system and the content is then returned back into, uh, into Oracle. So value, moving a large offline business process online. We can uh, save up to 55% in project turnaround time in the workflow by eliminating manual gathering of content, emailing content back and forth to translators and reviewing and reviewers, and then, manu and then not having to manually publish content back into the web. You can also save money up to 75% by reusing legacy translation. An average 45% in translation costs using machine translation with post-edit, and then by using cloud-based collaboration for free community translation of ads and changes, uh, you can drive your costs down as well. Consistency of marketing mes message, you can also use glossaries. Um, and glossaries are like terminologies where you buy specific keywords or you have uh, specific meanings that you want to tra have translated, you can uh, enforce those. And then you can also get a real-time cloud view into the translation process. So at any given time, you can know where your translation is on any given uh, page or a piece of content that you're trying to translate. Uh, also, in those automatic workflows that we or automated workflows that we talked about, you can set up message notifications and different types of things to let you know when things happen, uh, so you're stayed uh, you stay in the in the know. So I'm going to turn the time over here in just a second to uh, to uh, Tony, and we're going to talk about uh, LingoTech inside. Um, again, this is Tony Field, Vice President of Function One. Um, and I'm going to turn the uh, presentation over to him and let him go through the, the presentation. Tony, let me know when you get that. Yeah, really, Steve. Thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Calvin. That's great. So I'll walk through the uh, integration with uh, Lingotech inside Oracle Web Center sites. We're starting off as uh, at the login screen, and we'll log into the sample site, which is Oracle's Abbey Sports uh, sample site. As we can see, when we first log in, we've already got a couple of new dashboard widgets that will give us some information about the uh, the, the status of our, of our website. We can see that we've recently translated a number of articles over the course of the last week, um, and nothing is out of sync. And so these dashboard widgets will update as we go through the, the use of the uh, translation integration and we'll keep a surprise so that we can know best how to uh, keep our site translated and current. 
So let's start off by taking a look at an article. Here is a standard page from the uh, AVI Sports sample site. You can see they're all uh, fairly uh, straightforward pages. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, to take an English, an English page and we'll translate that into a couple of other languages. Okay, so we'll start out by uh, looking at the article, reviewing it, uh, becoming comfortable that the content is ready to send for translation. And once we're satisfied that it is, the integration simply expects us to complete our regular workflow assignment. So in Web Center Sites, we have the ability to take a look at our, our asset as it exists in the workflow, and we simply execute a workflow command to finish my assignment. With Lingotech Inside Sites, we have a custom workflow transition called Send for Translation. So this is the first time that we've sent this article up to Lingotech. Once we complete our assignment, we have the ability to select the translation workflow that we'd like to use. We can provide notes for the translation team, and then of course we can select the languages into which we'd like to translate this content. I'll select French and German. I click Send for Translation, and at this point our article is being processed and a translation is being created on sites and sent up to Lingotech for processing. A few seconds later we receive a confirmation indicating that the document was successfully sent for translation and it's now being worked on by Lingotech. At this stage, because I've finished my assignment, it's currently up to the translation uh, users on Lingotech to take care of it. But since I've selected a, an automated workflow, it won't be long before our content is ready and available. So let's take a look at that French content and see if it's available. We'll switch over to the form view so that we can see a list of all of the translations that are available today. We can see that we have four copies of the, er, three copies of the article, one of them in English that's already been created. We have a French version of it, which is now 100% complete, and a German version, which is also complete. I don't have a Spanish version created yet. I didn't select that one. When we click on the French version of the article, it opens up and we can see that the content is already there, translated into French. If we were to add an additional language, we can simply go back to our workflow and finish our assignment again, this time adding the fourth language. We select Spanish. And just as we sent these articles up to Lingotech for translation, whenever we work through the process and actually make an update to the content in English, we can see the same process take place um, and, and send updates up to Lingotech where Lingotech will then manage the translation of all of the changes that have been made to the content. And we can see now that we have a French copy of the article as well. So that shows an automated translation process going through Web Center sites. Now let's take a look at, a, as an, at an example of using um, a more, a, a, a different Lingotech workflow. We'll open up another article and we need to send this one off for translation as well. Now for convenience we've added a new toolbar button to Web Center Sites to allow users to finish their assignment more rapidly. This time we'll send it for translation. And instead of selecting the automated workflow, we'll select the demo workflow and we'll send this article up to French and Spanish. This time, this asset will go through a machine translation on, uh, on Lingotech, but it won't be sent back down to Web Center sites automatically. Instead, business users have the option of reviewing that translation. So let me walk you through that process. I'm a business user working in Web Center Sites. I know what I would like my text to, to read in French. So what I'll do is I'll click on this translate link so that I can complete that last 50% of this workflow. And when I click on translate, we automatically open up the Lingotech workbench where we can view all of the sentences that have not yet been translated and apply our own changes. So we can see we've already got French content that's been approved. 
and I'm being given the option of approving each individual segment on my own. If I'd like to make changes in here, I, I can do that, or I can just simply approve what's been provided. As I click through and approve the content in the Lingo Tech Workbench, the percent complete increases. There are a number of sophisticated features in here. I'm just going to skip over them at this point and approve all of the remaining segments and get back into what's in your site. Great. So now that we've completed this workflow, we can save it and close. And we return back to Web Center Sites. At this point here, we can refresh the status of our uh, language selection screen. And we can see that progress has been made and the French asset is now ready for viewing. It's been sent back to Web Center Sites and is available to edit. When we click on when we click on the French article, it opens up translated. So with this, you can see a complete round trip of business users creating new content in Web Center sites, sending it up through workflow to Lingotech, having it come back directly through machine translation, as well as having that content go through a normal workflow on the Lingotech platform and then return to Web Center sites when ready. So with that, I'll hand it back to uh, Calvin. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Tony, very much. That was uh, very, uh, very well done, and uh, appreciate your time uh, with uh, with us today. Uh, that was pretty exciting to be able to see that uh, you know all of the workflow steps that we talk about uh, in the previous slides, um, you know, being executed in real time on on a on a Oracle Web Center sites uh, example. Uh, as you saw in the first one, you, you know, we did a machine translation. Um, you can see how seamlessly and almost real time that is for that to happen. He selected content. He's picked which languages he'd like to have machine translated. He's had that sent up to us and then returned back um, and displayed, uh, you know, through the workflows. And then also to do a, either a community or professional and showing you the workbench that uh, allows you to uh, do the translations either uh, with your translators or uh, with our translators at, on LingoTech. Uh, thank you very much again. So next, we're going to go and do a couple of this business case studies. Uh, we actually have three examples, um, one business case study and a couple of uh, kind of newer clients that we have that we'd like to kind of highlight and, and show you what we're doing with those folks. Um, the first one is Hitachi Data Systems. Um, and we've been working with a, a gentleman named Sean Madsen. He's the Director of Global Web Marketing. And we've been helping them uh, do some translation of uh, multiple assets that they have. But Hitachi Data, data Systems is, uh, was, you know, this is where they were at. They lacked the, the ability for global web capabilities to lead, uh, which led to inconsistency of messaging, time to market, and failed to address local languages needs. Um, ACS was also behind their competitors in the global web arena. Translation efforts were superficial, inconsistent, and wasteful. Um, they were not reusing translation memories. Um, and they didn't have any automation of tools, lack of translation automation tools, discouraged localization, it was hard, lots of steps, too much time, it would cost too much money. Um, and lead generation and acquisition capabilities were stifled by the absence of global content. And then excessive operational overhead due to manual and redundant processes. Um, so again, if you go back to those slides earlier where we talked about all of the processes, all of those things uh, were getting in their way of, of executing against their objectives, which was to have a global website and, and be able to uh, communicate with their clients. So high-level solution summary. Um, the first piece we're going to talk about is the governance structure to enable global management. Um, they, they have you know, very strict government governance around it, so they have to have uh, the ability to track uh, what they're doing, who's translating. Um, embed the process to ensure editorial and brand review of all content across their 30 sites uh, happens. Um, governance is key to building and manage scalable tools and processes um, and, and efficiency. So the, for them to actually have a, a, a trail or a stack of things that they could look at was, was very important. Um, they needed to expand the use of the existing content management platform. Um, they wanted to have a single source of storage. 
um, classification system to automate the content creation, localization, and public publication of uh, the 40 different geo sites. And they wanted to be able to decentralize publishing and website flexibility to address local marketing needs. So increased translation management uh, uh, system usage of the TMS. I deliver organic agnostic TMS integrated with Oracle Web Center. In this case, it's content um, that they're using for central translation memory, style guide management, lower cost, increased quality, um, governance, all of the stuff that you can see on each of these uh, the solution slide here. So how do they choose Lingotech? Um, they actually do an on-premise. We do do on-premise um, and, and cloud-based. Uh, as you know, most uh, of our, our customers are, are SaaS, uh, cloud-based, and you know, vendor agnostic. Um, they needed to be well integrated with Web Center, parent-child workflows, et cetera. They were used to the system. They wanted to leverage existing assets that they were already had and paid for. So they needed to have a system that could integrate into that. Uh, allow for self-publishing, ease of use. Um, we talked about government governance before, being able to keep track of how things are, are uh, being translated, who does what. Uh, good at managing incremental changes. They estimated that they have anywhere from 50 to 100 uh, changes per month for the 40 languages that they do. Uh, so you can see that becomes uh, can become unruly without uh, having this stuff automated and, and uh, you know the, the TMS keeping track of all of the changes and, and differences. Uh, you know, Tony showed you that showed you that in sites. You can see what was in sync and what was out of sync, and you can go in there and quickly make uh, adjustments and changes. You can automate that, or you can have it done manually. Um, you can support m multiple file formats and key languages. Um, our TMS does support other uh, things other than HTML and, and XML. We can support all of the Word docs, Open Office documentation, uh, most uh, Adobe documents. Uh, I think we support about 26 or 28 different file formats. Um, and can add those if we need to uh, for a specific ones or, or if you have a, a specific one that we don't, we can always add that in. So uh, dot com, global dot com phased approach. Um, they did this in a two-phased uh, approach. Um, we wanted to bring all of the geo sites look and fill on par with HDS, so they wanted to have a consistent message across all of the you know, imagery and all of that stuff. We wanted to provide fully translated and, and managed geo websites for resource constraints a model that they have. Um, they wanted to provide each geo with the ability to expand their web offering to meet local needs while staying aligned with corporate web guidelines. We talked about that with the uh, glossaries and terminology and, and those types of things that we can manage out of the TMS. Um, they wanted to leverage the enterprise CMS to enable self-publish and autom automate the business processes. Um, again, existing assets that they already had. And then they needed to be able to scale within the organization to understand regional source uh, resources and budget needs. Um, all of these phases have been completed and they're on a second phase now. Uh, you know, offer a, a localized dot-com presence in non-geo, uh, U.S. geo, consistent with corporate dot-com, facilitate a consistent message globally and timely, provide a cost-efficient uh, solution to execute the global web strategy, maintenance translation support overhead, all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, the statistics we are talking about, the, you know, the 55% and 45% are, are driven from clients like HDS that are uh, literally saving money by using our system and and uh, the time and money uh, across the board. So recently, new tech sites installed. This is a site specific, uh, and Tony uh, helped us do this. It's GIA. GIA was established uh, in 1931. And they are the world's foremost authority on diamonds, color stones, and uh, pearls. Um, you know, precious stones. Uh, public Benefit Nonprofit Institute GIA is the leading source of knowledge, standards, and education in, in gems and jewelry. What they wanted to do is increase their presence worldwide by translating the GIA.com into multiple languages. Uh, they've been guided by Function One and Tony's team, um, and they have chosen Oracle Web Center sites, EMS, and, and Lingotex uh, TMS to automate the process and keep their content in sync. So what they did is they purchased a SaaS version. They actually run on a SaaS version, unlike uh, HDS, which was doing a premise space. But they have a SaaS version of the Lingotech TMS, uh, plus integrations into both sites and content. Uh, sites is for the new installation. Content is their legacy application. And they have a variety of content to be translated using the workflows, uh, the TMS sites, content, and, and Lingotech translation services. 
they have the GIA website that they're translating, all of the e-learning, marketing, and documentation. Uh, they're starting with two languages and plan to move on to several more. So we're excited to have those folks on and they're working with Tony and, uh, and getting them moving along. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about really quickly, and I, and I just bring these up just to give everybody, you know, kind of an idea of the different types of clients that we have and the different uh, solutions that we can offer. But uh, we're with the Canadian Standards Association, CSA. Um, with, they work with businesses, organizations, and code authorities around the world to help create safer, more sustainable world for people and for businesses. Uh, from testing and certifying products today, safety performance requirements to developing leading edge, consistent-based standards to support tomorrow's technology. CSA develops solutions that strive to promote safety to industry and society. Um, CSA developed a new CSA.com website and needed to translate the content to German, simplify Chinese, and French Canadian. Uh, obviously, safety and standards is uh, key, you know, not just only in, in uh, North America, US-based markets, but also in foreign countries as well. So they wanted to be able to promote themselves, you know, kind of across the globe. So CSA has chosen Lingatech CMS to automate the process of uh, web translation and keep the CSA.com website. Uh, content inside of Web Center sites in sync. They purchased a uh, SaaS-based version of Lingotech CMS plus integration into sites. Um, they are currently uh, doing content translation to three languages using the workflows, um, and they have saved time money from the statistics that we saw earlier in the presentation. So a few of our customers, to give everybody an idea, um, we've seen uh, Atachi and, and some others. We have uh, FireEye, uh, GIA, we do a lot of stuff with uh, the federal government uh, in the United States, um, Nuance, Mosey, AMC, all different types of clients. So you can see that we, we go across from high-tech companies to uh, industry-specific uh, companies to uh, you know, an all-global and, and, and government work as well. So our commitment, we were one of the first ones to become, uh, first ISVs to become member of the Oracle Validated Integration Program, they call it OBI with Web Center Sites. Um, we're compatible with content uh, server 10G and 11G and compatible with Oracle sites uh, 7.6 and 11G R1. And we are also uh, Oracle Web Logic ready. Uh, here's our contact information. Um, you can get more information by visiting uh, www.lingotech.com slash Oracle. Um, you did not get introduced to Kent Bridges. Kent Bridges is our VP of Business Development. Um, he is on, uh, you can see his email address, and Susie, who did the introduction uh, at the beginning of this uh, broadcast, you can see her uh, email address as well. Um, you can also reach us at sales at lingotech.com. Uh, now I'm going to turn some time over to, that's kind of the end of the presentation. We'd like to do uh, some questions um, and answers at the, kind of the end. So if anybody has any questions, um, please, uh, Please send those out to us, and we can we can answer those for you. And I invite and I invite Tony to jump on as well, too, if he's still on the phone. Okay. Well, here's the first one of the first questions I have. It says, "Our web content is very dynamic. Uh, can I just translate as and changes as opposed to translating the whole page again?" Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but I can give you a little bit more detail. We we saw we store all of the uh, original translations and what we call translation memories. Um, if you go into a particular page and you make, say, a sentence change or a paragraph change and you reinitiate a translation workflow, we go and push that up to our Lingotech translation management system. We do match against the translation management, uh, uh, against the translation memories in the translation management system, and you only have to change the ads and changes that uh, have, have been taken place. So, we can leverage pre-existing translations or translations that are in progress. That all happens in real time. Um, you know, as soon as the translation memory is saved, it can be searched against uh, via another document. So uh, it's very efficient. Other agencies uh, don't have real-time translation memories. Uh, another question, can I import my existing uh, translation memories and glossaries into the platform? Uh, from from previous folks I use absolutely we support the standard space uh, for translation members members of TMX um, glossaries of terminologies you can import via CSV file and a couple of other standard formats but absolutely you can use those assets 
um, that you have. And if you do have a translation agency, they should be able to give those to you. Uh, another question is, uh, do I have to sign into the translation workbench uh, if I'm doing a kind of in-house translations? Uh, absolutely not. Those uh, are uh, we integrated the workbench into seamless, uh, seamlessly into sites. So it's a single sign-on. I think uh, Tony demonstrated that where you could just go in and, and if you're doing the translations yourself or you have an in-house person doing the translations, they can make those as well um, and do that right from uh, within within sites. Um, another question just came in, um, how scalable is it in terms of large communities? Um, we are, uh, our cloud-based TMS uh, sits on Amazon AWS um, and uh, it has very elastic in nature. We can add uh, capacity uh, very quickly. Um, projects have a tendency to be very intensive for you know, a certain amount of time and then when they're in a kind of maintenance mode or the change mode, or, you know, the, the 50 to 100 changes a month, mode and it's not requiring quite as much um, you know bandwidth and, and stuff but we can elastically uh, in, in scale our TMS to accommodate all of our, our users for all of our customers. Uh, well I think that's uh, unless someone else has another question let me check my other pane it doesn't look like it um, I do appreciate everybody's time today. Um, we will uh, record Calvin, this, or we have. Re oh, sorry. Calvin, I'm sorry. I, I see one more. I think you might have missed it. It says, "How invasive is the LingoTech translation module in Web Center Site?" Do you want to take a few minutes to answer that, or or maybe Tony? Yeah, I'll take. Yeah, let's have Let's have Tony take that one. Good. One. I'm sorry, I missed that. It was at the bottom of the list there. Sure, I'll take that. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. So uh, the, the LingoTech Inside Sites integration is designed to fit into Oracle Web Center Sites native workflow capabilities. So uh, we've implemented it as a series of uh, workflow step actions. It is completely agnostic to your asset model. So you can apply it to any existing data model you already have in place for Web Center Sites. Um, and uh, you can apply it to any start menu or any workflow that you already have in place as well. That's fully documented and it's fully um, you know, compatible with those systems. So it's a very lightweight and non-invasive integration. Thanks. Great. I appreciate that. That's, uh, that's good to know um, and I appreciate the insight on that as well. All right. Well, everybody, I appreciate your time today. Um, we will be recording this, or we have recorded this. Uh, we will be posting it up in the next couple of days. We will send you an email with a link to it. Uh, appreciate everybody's time. Thank you, Tony, for uh, helping us do the demonstration. Susie, for the introduction. Uh, and everybody have a great day today.